And what is this for? Oh, eternal. Oh, three years. Last week. I think it's uh, appropriate to thank the Balboas for their tremendously yes. beautiful work. Yes. Right? So pass it on without, right? And uh, <clears throat> when you think of all of the work the Babos have done, it's really uh, reintroducing on a higher level the very heart of the Hellenic spirit. The very what? I'm sorry. Heart of the Hellenic spirit. The very heart of the Hellenic come, experience. Come. Okay. So spirit. Spirit. Next time we drink a cup of coffee, we toast it to them both. You only, you only get half a cup tonight. Yeah. Okay. Look, what's great about this, it's absolutely obvious. Right? Look here. It works on a very interesting analogy out of the Republic, <clears throat> but in principle, it's this statement. The soul is capable of turning upon itself, and in doing so, it knows itself. The analogy is, as the eye sees the visible world, so too the intellect intellects the intelligible. That's all. It's obvious. It either does or it doesn't. In order to check that, I'll ask Julie. Is yeah, that right? It either do or it don't. Yes. Right. So look how he puts it. We'll get a reader. Reader. Proposition 83, are we talking about? Yes, Barbara? starting with 83. Oh, yes, go okay. ahead, Barbara. So from one Balboa? Yes. All that is self-recognizable. Wait till we get there, please. 83. You sent out one today, right? A version? Today? Was it today? No, not today. Last okay. week or something. I got one yesterday, there was a poem, and it said, hit control in space if you want to get everything lined up. Oh, because um, we noticed that when we send stuff out to people through the email, that it gets messed up, so... So you didn't... Greek instead of English. Right, I thought you sent that like today or yesterday evening. Um, Hold it. I probably yesterday. Barbara sent out, did you not? Barbara? Yes, I did. Well, yeah, we sent you out sent the out link a whole that pr Jeff print posted out. the text. Right. Oh, that I didn't send out. Who prints out? Who does? This is not Juan. This is Dodds or whoever. Okay. Oh. This is the... Well, let's read this and then read Balboa's. Okay, okay. go ahead. Let's go. Proposition 83. All that is capable of self-knowledge is capable of every form of self-reversion. For that it is self-reversive in its activity is evident, since it knows itself. Knower and known are here one, and its cognition has itself as object, 
as the act of the knower, this cognition is an activity, and it is self-reversive, since in it, the subject knows itself. But it, I'm not reading the, I'm reading the... No, yes, you're reading the... Yeah. But if in activity, then also in existence, as has been shown. For everything whose activity reverts upon itself has also an existence which is self-concentrated and self-contained. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Re read the one Babo. Yeah, no, that's two different now. people. No. Sure, I don't mind. Uh, okay, I'm just bumping back up to the top. Okay, so all that is self-recognizable, realized, actualized, or known, is entirely self-converted. Hmm. For on the one hand, it is clear that in knowing itself, <clears throat> self is converted to itself by self's active, actual active energy. For that which recognizes and that which is being recognized is one. And the recognition slash intuitive knowledge of self is directed to itself as to that which is realized, known, recognized. And this recognition on the one hand, by innately belonging to that which is realized, is a certain actual active energy Whereas on the other hand, it is the recognition of self directed to itself for the reason that self is self-recognizable or known. Moreover, given that self is self-converted through its usia, then self is also self-converted through its energy, as it has been shown. For all that is converted to itself through its actual active energy also possesses a self-converging usia, which also abides in itself. Now, you have to decide what difference does it make to pick up the Balboas versus the other. But he's using very nicely the word usia, and we know how that's represented. Right. Basically, um, here it is. It can turn upon itself and know itself. That's basically the image that's running through the entire proposition. Um, the key line, would you agree? For the reason, right, uh, all of this knowing is based upon one reason. For the reason is that the self is self-recognizable, that is to say it knows. That's the basic, that's the basic idea that runs through this entire thing, right? So, uh, in the same way, let's take the next 84. Barbara will read the dots. Hmm. Okay. 40, 44, right? 84. 84? Isn't that, isn't that the way it goes? Uh, no. It goes 83, 44. Uh, the, I thought the numbers that you sent followed this order. Okay, let me see. And I just turn them around a bit. There is no 84. There is no 84. 83, 44. Okay, let's do 44. Want this copy? I have an extra one. Okay, um, sure. Um, sorry, I'm, I've misplaced it now. Okay, all that is contained Oh, sorry. All that is capable in its activity of reversion upon itself. See, this is an activity. It's an activity. It's reverting upon itself. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Is all, uh, sorry. All that is capable in its activity of reversion upon itself is also reverted upon itself in respect of its existence. Right. So, 
this happens on the level of the soul as well, and mm -hmm. the role of the, and on the level of the, of the soul. Mm -hmm. So, go ahead. Okay. Okay. Um, for if for if being capable of reversing reversion upon itself in its activity. Right. Right. Now we're focusing on just this, aren't we? That's mm -hmm. its activity. Go ahead. It were not reversive in its existence, its, exist, its activity would be superior to its ex existence, the former being reversive, the latter not, mm -hmm. inasmuch as what belongs to itself is more complete than that which is conserved wholly by another. Then, anything, if then, anything is capable of reversion upon itself, in respect of, of the activity which proceeds from its existence, its existence is likewise reversive. Right. Hey, so, yes, the key point is there's a difference between existence and activity. Mm -hmm. Activity presupposes the existence of something doing the activity. Mm -hmm. And therefore, he has a right to conclude in this way. So that it not only has an activity directed upon itself, but also belongs to itself and is by itself contained and perfected. And this, hey, this is a perfecting, right? This is a perfecting game. Right? Perfecting, self-perfecting. And since it's ceaseless, therefore it's always perfecting itself. Mm -hmm. Let's go to... The Balboa. Balboas, please. Mm -hmm. 45? 44. 44. Oh. Here, I've got Balboa's. You want to read it live? Sure. All that is converted to itself according to energy is also converted to itself according to usia. For if, on the one hand, it is able to be converted to itself in energy, whereas, on the other hand, no conversion arises in its usia, then it will be superior according to its energy rather than according to its usia. By the one being converted, but the other unconverted. Hmm. For that which is preservative of itself is superior to that which is solely preserved by another. And being self-preservative is more perfect than that which is solely preserved by another. Accordingly, then, if it is a certain convergent energy proceeding from its usia that is directed to itself, then it will also be allotted its convertive usia, so that it will not only energize towards itself, but it will also be of itself and from itself, self-maintained and self-perfected. Of itself, from itself, perfecting itself. Mm -hmm. right. Maintaining and perfecting yeah. itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I ended up being a little puzzled by the fact that, well, they translate Usia as existence in the other translation. And yet we know that Usia is, is a name for uh, reversion, a kind mm -hmm. of reversive energy. And yet here, huh, it's saying that. It's it's being it's reversive both in its energy and in its in its usia, right? Mm. It's converted to mm -hmm. itself in its energy, and conversion is also arising in its usia. According to mm -hmm. the, he's in focus, its usia he's is the focusing way that negative the energy, right? The energy for it and taking it as a whole. When okay. he uses the idea of usia, he's taking that as a whole. Okay. Okay. Ish. Is he also saying that? <laughs> Sorry. Is he also saying that um, self is only usia, or and therefore its activity and its ultimate ground are the same? Yes. I'm not real happy with ultimate ground, yeah, but... That's just how it functions. Mm, okay. 
how it functions. Yeah, this is how it internally functions. Hmm. Hmm. This okay, is and that's its energia, or that's its. Yeah, this is a. This is an activity. Yeah. And it's also doing that simultaneously. So you can talk about it as this activity, <coughs> or you can talk about it taken as a whole. Okay, I'll go with that. Yeah. N number next? Uh, number next is 15. Hold it. first page of the other, but, yeah, you, but I, you don't I, have wands? Yeah, I, I thought I had it all in the, in the Greek. Okay, go ahead. All that is capable of reverting upon itself is incorporeal. For it is not in the nature of any body to revert upon itself. That which reverts upon anything is conjoined with that upon which it reverts. Hence it is evident that every part of a body reverted upon itself must be conjoined with every part, since self-reversion is precisely the case in which the reverted subject and that upon which it has reverted become identical. But this is impossible for a body, and universally for any divisible substance. For the whole of a divisible substance cannot be conjoined with the whole of itself because of the separation of its parts, which occupy different positions in space. It is not in the nature, then, of any body to revert upon itself, so that the whole is reverted upon the whole. Thus, if there is anything which is capable of reverting upon itself, it is incorporeal and without parts. Huh. <coughs> That is to say, you know, if you can bend this, if you can bend this, turn it upon itself, uh, you're not going to be able to superimpose all the parts of it on itself. Only those parts that are coincidental with it. Therefore, it is not possible for anything to do what he's asserting the soul does. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the whole property of a seer is something that is soul like based upon the intellectual functioning of the soul. Hmm. Hmm. I used to tell my students, you know, a human being is the only thing that can reflect on itself without using a mirror. Oh. Yeah, I like that. I may have stolen it from you. <laughs> I still like it. <laughs> okay, let's go. To one, 15? One, 16. Okay. 16, 15, no, 15. 15. This is 15. 15. But, but, Thank you. Can I, can, I, uh, can I hang on 15 for just a second with a question? I guess what that did for me is it made me wonder um, um, how is it possible for a soul to look at itself, to reflect on itself, and to, and in that reflection, to to do what Proclus is describing here, uh, which is to that that the, that. Wow, I can't, it's so hard to put in words. To be okay. that which is... You use the word reflect. I don't think you need that word. It's not going to fit. I only added that because David did. You're yeah. right. Okay, um, go ahead. Well, to, to uh, uh, re 
revert back on oneself and to to well in the in the body the body can't do it because then uh, it's impossible because it would have to revert back well it can't have parts um, and it, all these parts would have to take up the same space so it's right. impossible and that's impossible so I'm thinking on the on the level of something that's incorporeal what's the analog of that it means that what is the analog of that? God. That, but but the but the analog works, whereas the yeah. corporeal one wouldn't. Right. And it means that I think it. All of those statements that he denies that things do now should apply to the self or the soul. So okay, so I should be able to go. Yeah, so I should go back. What's being stated so negatively about things that would be in the phenomenal world could be done positively right. for That's right. an incorporeable and right. in, impartable mm -hmm. thing like the soul. Mm -hmm. I guess, though, that, okay, I, I, I like that, and I'll, I'll do yeah. it. Yeah, but but the gave, problem that I'm having is you gave still, up your question. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, exactly. The, the problem is still how can soul reflect on itself without being? Um, how can that which is doing the reflecting? Well, I added reflection again, but how? Uh -huh. <clears throat> what what is that whole process? You can use reversion instead. No, no. You have the whole process. It's described. You know, but you have a question about it. Yeah, the question is... The question is, how is it possible? Well, okay, maybe this, maybe this pulls us off the mark. But you have asked us in the past, several times, to take... Uh, now, maybe this is a different question, asking okay. what self is versus what soul is doing. But you've asked us, well, you know, can you put inequalities on self? You look at the self, what do you see? You've run us through that before, right? Mm -hmm. And the problem I've always had with that is not just that I don't see anything. I don't, I, I can't describe it. That's not the only problem I have. The problem I have is that in the act of doing that, it's, it's hard to, um, like time is still coming in. There's a, there's a shift in time. There's the looking and then there's the what's being looked at, and I shift back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, but they don't happen at the same time, at least as far as I'm aware. Yes. So, uh, it's, it's, it's like a snake that's trying to catch its own tail. Yes. And can't. Not, not, snakes can't, the soul can. Cannot. Can. Can. Yeah, the soul can. Snakes can. But how can... You know, because if a snake starts gobbling up its tail at some point, it's going to stop. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Would, if soul were looking at itself, mm -hmm. wouldn't it see itself looking back? At the same time, would it? But you're just, just you are introducing two different phases of time yeah, to make that statement. Yeah, this is my problem. But you started out by saying the necessity that the event should take place simultaneously. Absolutely. Therefore, you can't have your proposition that has two different mm. phases of well, time. But how can you see and be seen simultaneously and be aware of that and know what is doing the awareness, all of that simultaneously? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yes. That's right. In other words, you want it. You want the experience. Yeah. Right? You understand the way it's described. Yes. But you'd like to be able to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So are you bringing a dream tomorrow on Saturday? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. You went through a dream exploration last Saturday? I, uh, not, 
at uh, two salaries um, two salaries as well? And two salaries So does that do what the, what the proposition is saying? <coughs> Take all the different parts of your soul and lay them out in front of you and well. convert them back together? And I don't see that. No? Because he, he only has three parts here. Right, it's not, it is not the idea of the soul in the Republic. This is the pure soul that only can be described in this way. Sure. See, in the Republic, you know, there's reason, uh, thumos, epithymios, reason, etc. Is this the soul or the self? This is all that is the Well, which one are you into? I thought... You started talking about the No, no, no. Take a look at your text. Which one is what? Which one are we talking about? I'm thinking of self. Yeah, yeah. See how easy it is to answer that. Okay. Um. Okay. We try the next one. Oh. Yeah, but you've got soul up on the board, Doctor G. There it is. It's right there. That's oh. the problem. <laughs> See, the problem, the real problem is, and it's not good to talk about it, so let's not do it. <laughs> what is this? Yeah. That's a brilliant light of being. Therefore, that and only that is called knowledge, nothing else. And he's giving a philosophical critique of that experience. Hmm. Hmm. So let's not hold on to that too long because. Hmm. Okay, go for the next one, or okay, am I rushing you? Okay. Wait, wait. So, are we going to read the, the Balboa? Of uh, fifteen. Uh, yep. We're going to read the Balboa. Of fifteen. We already did. No. No, we didn't. No. Let's do it. Okay, Jeff. All that is converted to itself <laughs> is incorporeal. Are we doing it again? We're going back over we didn't read the Balboa. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm, I'm with the program. For no body is naturally adapted <clears throat> to revert back to itself. No. For if that which is converted to anything is conjoined with that to which it is converted, it is also evident that by converting to itself, all the parts of the body would be conjoined to all the parts of the body. For this is what it is to be converted to itself. Nice. When both, a, when both that which is converted and that to which it is converted become one. But this is wholly impossible in the case of body and for all that is partible. For the whole of that which is partible is not conjoined to the whole itself on account of the separation of the parts. For some are situated in places that are foreign to others. Accordingly, then, no body is naturally adapted to revert back to itself, so that the whole may be converted to the whole. Therefore, if anything is converted to itself, it is incorporeal and impartable. All right. All right, huzzah. Right? Next one? 16? Okay, 16. All that is capable of reverting upon itself has an existence separable from all body. For if there were any body whatsoever from which it was inseparable, it could have no activity separable from the body. Since it is impossible that if the existence be inseparable from bodies, the activity which proceeds from the existence should be separable. If so, the activity would be superior to the existence in that the latter needed a body while the former was self-sufficient, being dependent not on bodies but on itself. Anything, therefore, which is inseparable in its existence 
is to the same or an even greater degree inseparable in its activity. But if so, it cannot revert upon itself, for that which reverts upon itself, being other than body, has an activity independent of the body and not conducted through it or with its cooperation, since neither the activity itself nor the end to which it is directed requires the body. Accordingly, that which reverts upon itself must be entirely separable from bodies. Hmm. Yep. Hmm. He's still on the same point, taking each aspect of it. Hmm. Should we do the Balboas? Okay. Mm -hmm. The next one, the Balboas? All that reverts upon itself has an usia that is separate from all body. For if usia were in no way inseparable from body, then usia would not have a certain energy or activity that is separate from body. For it would be impossible for the body that proceeds from Usia. Impossible for the energy. Sorry, for the, thank you, for the energy that mm -hmm. proceeds from Usia to be separate if the existence or vital energy of bodies were inseparable from the Usia. For in this way, the vital energy would be superior to the Usia. For indeed, the Usia would be in need of bodies whereas the vital energy of body would be self-sufficient by being dependent on itself and not on bodies. For if anything is inseparable according to usia, then it is also, in a similar way, inseparable according to energy. Or rather, it is in a still greater degree inseparable. But if this were the case, then it would not revert upon itself for that which reverts upon itself by being other than body has an energy which is separate from body and not either through the body nor together with the body if indeed the energy and that to which the energy is directed that is the usia are in no way in need of the body accordingly then that which reverts upon itself is altogether separate from body <laughs> What do you see? He's so, um, he's so, um, thorough. Yes, yes, yes. Well, then let's go for the next one of Balboa's. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Which number would that be? 186. Wait. 43. 43. Oh, 43, I'm sorry. This is Ken King's series? Is that what Howard was chosen? Yeah. Does it have to be? This is Ken King's series. Ken King series that was supposed to show the immortality of the soul. This is the way Ken Demonstrate. King lined them up sequentially oh. in order to show the existence and necessity for the existence of the soul. All right. Okay. 43. Barbara, go ahead. Oh, I was going to let my friend Eldar read. Uh, all that is capable of reversion upon itself is self-constituted. For if it is by nature refer reverted upon itself and is made complete by such reversion, it must derive its existence from itself, since the goal of natural reversion for any term is the source from which its existence proceeds. If, then, it is the source of its well-being, it will certainly be also the source of its own being and responsible for its own existence as substance. Thus, what is able to revert upon itself is self-constituted. Okay, let's look at the Balboas. I can read, but anybody else? Hold it. Oh, no, no. I have a question. If we're going to say that the soul then is going to be totally separate from the body, and the soul then must be able to reflect on itself only, then it's not able to reflect on body. It doesn't care about reflecting on bodies. That's right. Nor is it or as it, at this, as it is. At this point, it has no concern with the body. <coughs> That's right. 
chew on that. <laughs> what? What did you say? I'm about to chew on that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's read it. Wait. Uh, before. By the way, uh, he's got a great line there. Uh, in this reversion or Usia-like motion, uh, then everything imparts its well-being to itself. Hmm. That's so important, right? <coughs> See, what's the consequence of this? There's a well-being that develops as a natural consequence of this. It's built within the process. Mm -hmm. Well, it also goes back to the idea that if all things desire the good, yes. and this thing desires yes. itself, yes. then it finds its good in itself. Thank you. Right? Well, well it said. It makes its good. Yeah. Yeah. The principle that all, all beings desire the good, mm -hmm. all men desire the good. Yeah. Yeah. So, Whenever anything reverses in the game of purpose, it reverts back upon its cause because it's through its cause that it thinks it gets its own good. No, what's puzzling, what he adds though, is, is everything will also impart existence to itself. Okay, now watch what follows. And everything will be the master of its own subsistence. So there's a mastership in this process. Mm, nice. And it exhibits itself when it reverts upon itself, and from that reversion it gets well-being. So in this beautiful diagram, which I know you all love, right, it's so accurate. If it does it, it knows that it does it, and it can master itself for knowing that it does itself. <laughs> so that's, that's nice to know. Yeah. All right, next one. Balboa? Yes, please. Okay, all that is converted to itself is Wh self. Which number? 43. I thought we just, yeah. Oh, did we? Well, we read the dots, but. We didn't, we didn't read the, yeah. Okay, we did Go ahead. That. All that is converted to itself is self-subsistent. For if everything is converted to itself according to nature, then everything is also perfected in the conversion to itself. And it will also possess its usia mm. from itself. For to each being, their procession according to usia <coughs> is also from this mm. to which their conversion according to nature is directed. Therefore, if everything imparts well-being to itself, then without a doubt, mm. everything will also impart existence to itself, and everything will be the master of its very own subsistence. Accordingly, then, that, that which is able to revert to itself is self-subsistent. Right? Still going on, isn't it? Yeah. Right? The next one seems to follow. Okay. What's the next number? 46. 46. You want to read one more? Yeah. <coughs> I didn't have 46. No. All that is self-constituted is imperishable. 46? I don't know if we, okay. if we have it, if we do it. Yeah. Go ahead. Sir. All that is self-constituted is imperishable. For if it be destined to perish, it will then desert itself and be severed from itself. But this is impossible. For being one, it is at once cause and effect. Now whatever perishes is in perishing severed from its cause. For each thing is held together and conserved so long as it is linked with the principle which contains and conser conserves it. But the self-constituted being its own cause never deserts its cause since it never deserts itself. Therefore, all that is self-constituted 
is imperishable. Right. Therefore, the soul is imperishable. It's eternal. I like it. Lovely. Right? Mm-hmm. Still going? Okay. The double 46. All that is self-substantive is incorruptible. For if it were to be corrupted, then it would abandon itself, and it would be apart from itself. This, however, is impossible. For by being one, it is, at once, cause, and that which is cause. Whereas all that is corrupted, by forsaking the cause of itself, becomes corrupted. For inasmuch as all be attached to that which contains and preserves self, each one is contained and preserved. But that which is self-substantive never abandons its cause, just as it does not abandon itself, for it is cause to itself. Accordingly then, all that is self-substantive is incorruptible. Follows, right? So, shall we go to the next one? The last one, yeah. Go ahead. What's the number? Okay, 186. Barbara, want to do the last one? Sure. Every soul is an incorp... 186. This is a very splendid one. Go ahead. Simple, direct. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, every soul is an incorporeal substance and separable from body. For if it know itself, and if whatever knows itself reverts upon itself, and what reverts upon itself is neither body, since no body is capable of this activity, nor inseparable from body, since again, what is inseparable from body is incapable of reversion upon itself, which would involve separation, it will follow that soul is neither a corporeal substance nor inseparable from body, but that it knows itself is apparent. For if it has knowledge of principles superior to itself, it is capable, a fortiori, of knowing itself, deriving self-knowledge from its knowledge of the causes prior to it. So he pulls all of them together, mm-hmm. right, in 186, and plants it in your head. There it is. How about Juan Balboa is on 186? Yes, we need it. 186, soul, please. Every soul is an incorporeal Uzziah that is also separate from body. For if, on the one hand, every soul recognizes or intuitively knows herself, then that which recognizes, intuitively knows itself, is thus converted or turned to itself. However, that which is converted to itself does not relate to body, for every body exists without being converted to itself. Neither is soul inseparable from body, Thus, soul is separable from body. For that which is inseparable from body is not naturally adapted to be converted to itself. For in this way, soul will exist separate from body. Accordingly, then, neither is the soul a corporeal lucia, nor is she inseparable from body. Moreover, that the soul is capable of intuitively knowing herself is certainly clear. For if self also intuitively knows the natures that are above, and if she is naturally adapted to intuitively know herself, then she intuitively knows herself in a much greater degree from the causes prior than self. Mm-hmm. Key, key part, right? From this, he makes the great statement that, hey, you know what? Now it's a condition to go to what is prior to it. Mm. And therefore, it's capable of knowing what is prior to it. Yes. That's rather remarkable. And that, and that that's how it knows itself, right? Yeah. 
The knowing itself and knowing knows the that there is something prior to itself. But, but I thought what it was saying is that itself is its own cause. Yes, and effect. Uh, is that not equivalent to being prior to itself? No. And that, it's not the same thing? Okay. No, only because he's taking all of that together and he says, hey, in that state, it's also possible to know what's prior to it. So there must be something higher and superior to it. In other words, yeah, yeah, no, I get yeah, yeah. it necessarily leads one to say, oh my gosh, even though that what experience is that brilliant light of being, there's something greater than that. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Now, I probably misheard it, but I thought from the Dodds, I got the impression from the Dodds that it was more... Can, can, can someone read the last four sentences of the gods again? Yeah, well, Balboa's put in Ursia as a prominent idea as it starts out, doesn't it? Go ahead, excuse me. I think we're right. This is uh, 180. This is 186, right? Superior to itself. Okay, that's fine. Is that okay? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Are we still in the elements for Tomorrow, next week? Regina, for those of you who are in it. Well, wait. There were there were others that we mentioned last week. Oh yes. I don't think we've so. had it. Well, After we all, next week, we, didn't touch, <laughs> we didn't touch. We didn't touch on thirty-five, one eighteen, <laughs> one one forty-eight, one fifty-two, one three. Yeah, a whole bunch of them. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll suggest a whole series. Oh, good. Now yeah. or later? Yeah, the interconnection between them. Yeah, okay. I'll put it cool. in the email. Okay. okay. If you do, I will send it out to our mm -hmm. Grupski. Okay. Thank you. Fun? Thank you. Mm. Curious? Fun, good. Did, yeah. did Ken King ever write a paper on, on these, no. uh, this set? You asked he should have, but he didn't. Right? Or did a demonstration yet? Yeah. Did he do a demonstration that might have been recorded? I, I don't know. know. I yeah, don't know. I don't know either. Interesting. Okay. If I, by the way, we should publish his MA paper. We've oh, said that so many times. Which one? The uh, uh, master? Yeah. I did put it up. Okay. okay. Oh yes, thank you. Again, we're off.